All right, uh, welcome back to the show. And uh, you want to go, let's go to some company. Where's, where's our brother? Our brother, Chris Sims. Always great him? to talk with him. Always still great him? to see him. Yeah, you it's sure great to see him. And, him? Oh, I am. <laughs> because you know what, um, Chris, first of all, I'm very happy to see you. You look well. And I want to um, I want to commend you for how well you came to the situation because I apparently somebody stole your identity, put out some whack list on top 10 quarterbacks and put your name on it. And I said, my brother, my brother, Chris Sims, would never put together a list like that. So thank you for being, you know, you took the high road. They go low, you go high. And somebody hacked your account because NBC doesn't pay you to come up with a list like this. So I, I just want you to talk about how, how you got through this very difficult time because that's not really your list. But no, 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 that is my list. And, it, and right now, it sounds like you're disrespecting my list more than anybody. So I'm going to have to call NBC and figure out where the hell you're filming this show, and I'll come find you. <laughs> oh, 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 you're going to take it there already? I just want to, how do you, I just, this is my one question for you. Because I looked down the list, I checked it, I checked it twice, three times. <laughs> and I, how do you come up with a list and not have the name Thomas Edward Patrick Brady in the sure. top 10 when, forget the numbers. The numbers are exceptional, so you shouldn't even, there's no excuse leaving him off the list with the numbers that he has. But you know better than anybody. The Buccaneers are 7-3. and three. If they win four of their last six, that's 11 wins in Tampa. And the last time Tampa won 11 games, my brother, my half-brother, Chris Sims, was on the center, taking them to the playoffs. That's 15 years ago. Come on, put him on that list. No, I mean, listen, it's not a disrespect to Tom Brady. And, and, and really, he was just on the outside looking in. I mean, really, I think the next two quarterbacks outside that top 10 were probably Derek Carr and Tom Brady. And I'm not saying in any specific order there. Brady's been great. He's certainly been better than what I expected. You guys heard me say at the start of the year, my one concern about him was just standing in there in the pocket, being willing to be aggressive down the field and take shots. So that has certainly got better. We know that. But also, come on now. The team's awesome. Let's, let's be real here. It's as good as it gets in football right now. It might be the best roster in the game. Any one of those top 10 quarterbacks you got, they'd be seven on three with the Buccaneers too. No, they wouldn't. It's not a disrespect to Tom Brady. I'm not trying to say that. What he's doing at this age is awesome. But at this age, no, I don't think he's capable of doing what some of the other guys on that list are doing. You know, and those guys are, are able to do more with less than he has at this point of his career. I'll say that. And hey, Michael, this is the other thing too. Been great. I know that. But you could easily look at their three losses and go, eh, you could semi-blame it on him. So it's awesome. And, it, and I don't want us to lose sight, sight of the fact of what a guy is doing at 43 because we've never seen that. The fact that we're even talking about him as a top 10 quarterback, to me, is mind-blowing. Um, but these other guys on the list, to me, you, if, I know you don't know me that well yet. We're getting there. But these are special entities that can work in just about any offense and ha can carry teams with just their great physical and, of course, their mental abilities and awareness and things like that by themselves to a degree. You know, I know it's not well, going to work out against all the great well, teams, Chris, but that's where I, I put a lot of stock into that. There's some clarification. What you just said, what, what you just said, nobody in the Tannehill household describes Ryan Tannehill the way you just did. I get you. And, and I saw Lamar Jackson on Sunday Night Football. I've seen Lamar Jackson this year. He's complained about his offensive coordinator. Um, Justin Herbert, nice rookie start. Come on. I, just, I, I don't Man, know. Justin like, Herbert? I, Justin Herbert's been I, off the charts. I mean, off the charts good. He can't play defense and run the ball and block and do everything. He can only play quarterback. That's all I'm evaluating. And I think that's sometimes where people miss out on the evaluation of the quarterback. We love to give the quarterback all the team success. 
Oh, hey, the team's great. Hey, it's the quarterback. Way to go. Screw you other 21 guys. It's all quarterback. You know, so that's where I push back against this. You're right about the Ryan Tannehill aspect of what you said there. I get it. You know, he'd be the one guy I understand people are going to question. But the thing I love about Ryan Tannehill is he is a very good athlete. I wish he would extend plays and do things more because he's capable of that. But, you know, other thing is, too, it's not a high-flying creative offense. And if people are open by an inch, man, Ryan Tannehill throws strikes in there. He leaves what I call no yards on the field at any time. Mm. Hey, listen, we could go back to Brady's game last week. And, yeah, the stats and the score are going to look good, but he right. left 130, 140 Chris. yards on the field with wide-open receivers. Not everybody Chris, else gets the privilege to have an offensive coordinator, a great old line, the best weaponry in football. And so far, and so for that, it's going to look ugly so, at times. And Lamar Jackson, so you, sorry, hold is on, still awesome. He needs some help in the pass game, too. You know, he can't do so, it all. Here's what I'm confused about, and, and, I, and I think yeah. this is where there's maybe the disconnect. Because what we maybe maybe we should start. Sorry, uh, we were we were getting ready for our show. Miss PFT live this morning, so you probably have already explained what I'm about to ask you. What was your criteria? Because you've used words like can and able. Are you ranking the top ten quarterbacks like your favorite or that you would like to have right now, or are you ranking them based on what they've done this season and who's playing the best right now, a combination? Is it eye test? Is it stats? How did you comprise this list? Yeah, no, it's about how they're playing right now. And yeah, my eye test and evaluation and all those things too. Because okay. listen, you, you can have some games here where some of these quarterbacks where it ain't going to look pretty for Joe Burrow. It's not, but the, you know, what do you want him to do if he can't even have a half a second to throw a football or they have no running game? You know, we could put other quarterbacks there too, and I'd go, yeah, it's going to look ugly. I don't care who you are. So, therefore, I'm not going to always dock Joe Burrow because I go, well, if he didn't move the ball today. Well, he didn't have a chance to move the ball today. That's not fair if you just evaluate the Pittsburgh game and do all those things. So I'm trying to take in totality of what's realistically mm -hmm. uh, what's realistic to be asking of the person in the situation, and then what are they actually doing with the situation? Are they doing more that's there than be had? Okay. And that's really the big thing to me. A lot of these guys, they can make it happen by themselves. You know, there's going to be times where, yeah, Cincinnati's going to get overwhelmed by a team, and he can't make it happen, Joe Burrow or whatever else. But I think you get my overall concept there especially the quarterbacks you see in my top five. Right. Those guys, any no, offense, I do. I do. no matter what it is, they can make it work yes. and make it go. It's a special group to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, it, I, I, it, it gets, I, I thought you had another uh, one, Smith. I'm, I'm out. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I thought you had another one. I was Because I, 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 I felt like I, I, felt like no, I dominated no, before, but anyway. My, no, okay, I got you. No, my, no, my camera's you. out, man. 20, tw no, no, no. 2020 strikes again, man. <laughs> 2020. Uh, so, hey, I, I want to ask you uh, this, Chris. Did you – where where did you uh, – in all seriousness, um, I just wanted to get you back for your little weight, your little weight, little uh, slight last week, man, you know, making me feel <laughs> very insecure about what I'm, what I'm looking like these days. But – uh, in all seriousness, did you did you wrestle over anything? The, the top speaks for itself. Not much wrestling there in the top five. But how about you know Ben Roethlisberger? Uh, any any quarterbacks that aren't there that you said? Uh, I wish I could sneak them in that top ten. I think that you know Ben was right there on the edge. He was. I think I you know Ben. I told you about Derek Carr and Tom Brady. I think those would probably have been the next two guys up on my list right there. But Big Ben, Matt Ryan, I think those would probably be all the four guys I would have said who are just right there on the cusp. And I understand that, hey, listen, I understand there's some people that might have Brady nine or eight. I get that. This is my list. I work at it really hard. I'm not saying it's written in stone. But this is what I believe, and I got a pretty good track record of evaluating quarterbacks. So uh, I, I think those are the guys that are just out on the fringe. And then, no, let hey, let's not forget, Dak Prescott, you know, if he doesn't get hurt, he's probably on this list and bumps maybe one of those rookies out of there, Ryan Tannehill certainly too. 
Uh, but I think we hit the main names to me that are hey. that are on that fringe top ten conversation. Hey, I'm I'm back. I'm back now. I got I got, I got my, my camera came back. Uh, before it's my last question for you, but I'm gonna say something. First of all, regardless of any exception that we take with your list, thank you. Because as you know, having been in this business for as long as you've been, nothing gives like lists. Nothing, nothing provides more conversation and content like lists. So thank you for doing our work for us. Because, oh, Chris Sims got a list. That's, that's, that's a good chunk of the show right there. So there you go. So appreciate it. <laughs> no the, problem. The, the, only, I, the list, the only name they stress me I out wanna, when NBC asked me to yeah. do this stuff. They're like, hey, can you? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. here we go. All right, fire up here social it is. media crap on Sims well, session. The, the, only, the only person I want to go a little bit deeper with you on is just Lamar Jackson. Because, you know, after the season he had last year and he made it look so easy, there's been a lot of uh, concern around his performance. Understanding that the wide receivers, you know, aren't a dynamic group. Some injuries on the offensive lineup. We lost, did we lose Chris Sims? I, I can so. hear you. I hear you. So oh, good. Going. We can hear us. Good. Ask the question. Right. He can hear um, Good. So, yo, no, just Lamar Jackson. I mean, for, that, was, that was the one, more than the omission of Brady, Still seeing Lamar Jackson up there was probably the one that stood out to me that I want to talk to you about. So I guess put Ravens fans and, and, and the rest of us, just Lamar fans, at ease with what is he doing well despite uh, the struggles of the offense in general. Yeah, sure. Well, Lamar is still special. And a lot of his things he does for his football team don't go on the stat sheet. You know, he, he is a talent that, like a Kyler Murray, they force teams to play defenses they don't want to play because, hey, you might want to bring four blitzers to the left. What if they got a quarterback design run to the right with a pulling guard in front of them? Oh, man, the defense is screwed then. So there's more value to him than what the stats say. The league has caught on to their running game a little bit. Of course they have. Everybody studied Baltimore Ravens offense last year, let alone two all these teams that have athletic quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, you know, and so on and so on, they've infused some of these Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson running back plays into their game plan. So all these defenses are getting to practice against these looks and what it is a whole lot more. It was the biggest thing in the league last year. So a lot of defensive coordinators, especially the ones that played the Ravens, took time out to study it and figure it out. But then the biggest thing is this, because he's gotten better as a passer. He really has. It's not going to matter because the run game doesn't dominate it enough now. And the pass game scheme, Michaels, is just not good enough and diverse enough to lend itself to, hey, the run game's not working today. We need Lamar in the pass game to take over. Lamar is capable. It's the system that's not capable. Yeah. That's how they lose yeah. games to New England last week. New England, not a good run defense, but a smart guy right. like Bill Belichick, he breaks down the pass game and he goes, eh, I think I got to figure it out. I don't need to drop eight, and nine people in the coverage to stop this. I can put yep. more people at the line of scrimmage, stop the run, and I've got a pretty good clue in formations and personnel sets what they do and where they like to throw it. And that allows teams to be successful against both the run and the pass game. It's the... Yep. They need more in the pass game schematics to help out Lamar and help out their run game. You know, uh, Chris, I don't know if you, if you notice this. Uh, most of the time, uh, on, on when you come on, I put in my feed our brother Sims. Uh, today, I put in our stepbrother Sims. But listen, I was just being... I'm just being petty, being a little petty. It's all good. It's all family. Uh, love having you on, brother. You're back to being a brother. And uh, we'll see you next week. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the games tonight and this weekend, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I did notice the stepbrother thing, but it doesn't matter. Brothers got a <laughs> hug no matter what. So Hug it out right there. Feel. You're hugging me. I'll give it to Period. you. There it is. There it is. Right there. There, 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 there. Peace out. <laughs> Hit the weight room. Let's go. <laughs> no, I will not do that. That's too much work, man. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.